Hi everyone, I'm here with a rendering video. A lot of you asked how I render my hair, skin, and clothes, so I thought why not just do a more detailed video. So let's start off with the hair. So I'm painting Kila and his hair is white with kind of purpley blue uh, hue complementary colors. I don't really know proper terminology so I'm really sorry. Okay, but I'm going along his hair with this kind of light purple color and this is kind of the first step I do, which is just adding very basic shading, which is just kind of following the hair, what's the word? Line art, I forgot the word line art. <laughs> so just following along the hair line art, I'm just adding this complementary color. So on that note, definitely don't see me as like a, a teacher or like an art superior. Just see me as your art friend. Okay, we, we should have a nice environment here where we're all learning from one another. And this video is just one art friend showing another friend uh, one particular way that you can render. So I finished up with kind of outlining the um, outside of his hair and then now I'm going in with bigger chunks using the lasso tool color fill uh, function <laughs> and you can kind of see I'm creating, yeah I drew an arrow there, I'm kind of going along with the hair flow with these triangular shapes. Now you can see that one that I just did didn't really go with the flow so make sure that it's going along with the right creases and that the flow doesn't look like it's kind of obstructed or like going the wrong way. Of course, there's a lot of trial and error. Like, I mean, I don't particularly know at all sometimes how hair flows and it's just like seeing if the shapes works here or if the shape doesn't work here. Just, it's a lot of uh, like, does this look weird or does this look okay for me? <laughs> and then you can see I started uh, smudging the shapes that I've created because right now I'm kind of into this smoother, softer look. Definitely you can keep your shapes more sharp if that's a style that you're looking for, but I like to go in with the smudge tool and just make it look a little bit more soft and more blended. Now re-watching this and editing this, I realize how much I zoom in and zoom out, <laughs> so I'm really sorry about that, but it is a very good uh, technique or trick to use while you're drawing because it really gives a different perspective and you can see maybe some areas that need some more shading or some more touch-ups. So then we can see that I'm kind of adjusting the opacity again. I just kind of go with what I like at that moment. So that is my first multiply layer. I think I end up going in with four or five more multiply layers just to add, again, more depth. So yes, I'm going in with my second multiply layer now. Again, similar technique. I'm chunking off now, however, larger pieces and some in different areas uh, and a focus more on the part. You can see I kind of added more like large shapes where his part is and just sectioning off larger triangular chunks and then also you can see i'm adding some more stray wispy strands to add more depth and just make his hair look a little bit more flowy And like the first layer, I'm going in with the smudge tool again, kind of making it look more blended and more soft. Also, the next steps of the video, I'm so sorry, for some reason my iPad like ran out of storage and I had no idea that it stopped recording. So I'm using the time lapse function from Procreate to show this part. But basically this part, I'm going in with, enough, with another multiply layer and just using small dots to kind of create more of this depth. I'm saying depth so many times but smaller pieces to kind of show layers in his hair and then on a layer on top of coloring and line art i use this to create more smaller strands to again create more depth and layer in his hair and then lastly i use the uh, lasso tool to create shine and then i just smudge it like crazy so here we have a before and an after on hair rendering and let's move on to skin so for skin, I go in with a peachy color and I put it in the areas where the hair touches the skin, also the eyelid, cheeks, and neck, and then I kind of adjust the opacity to how I like it. And then I go back in on another layer with the same color and kind of do these hair shades that are kind of like the same flow and shape as the hair to kind of create a shadow. 
Then I kind of do more shadow lines on the eyelid, the nose, as well as the neck. And then I go in again with another multiply layers, kind of like what we did for the hair, but we use a darker red and kind of fill in the crevices where the hair touches the skin. I also like to add some eyeliner sometimes, and then I also put it on the neck and also near the ears. And then I go in with another multiply layer also on the same color and then I just do really intense eyeshadow. I don't know why, I just like the way it looks. And then I also do more shadow on the neck, kind of blending into the ears and a little bit more where the hair touches the skin. And it was a little bit too saturated for me, so I just toned down the opacity and then played with the saturation. Okay, hi, I'm back with a new angle. Let me know in the comments below which one you prefer, like the screen recording or the one of me actually drawing on the iPad in real time. So next time I know uh, which one you prefer and then I'll just stick with that one. So basically I went in with another multiply layer and added more shadow to the eyelids and the neck. And then I also am adding some color to his cheeks and around his nose area and then kind of blending it out. And then I'm also adding a gray multiply layer on his eyes to kind of make him look a little bit more devious. And then also changing the color of his eye whites to something that's a little bit darker. One thing I learned is you want to make sure that his eye whites or any character's eye whites are not like pure white because it does kind of stand out a lot if it is a very, very kind of bright white. And then I'm adding a little bit more color around his uh, lips and his cheek area. And then I'm adding some color to his eyebrows just because his hair is white. I thought I would try to see what it would look like if I added eyelashes and eyebrows. Okay, so here's the before and after for the skin rendering. And let's move on to the clothes next. So for the clothes, it kind of follows the same steps as we did for the hair and the skin. I'm sectioning off kind of large triangular sharp shapes to kind of create dents and folds in his clothing. And then like before, we're going in with the smudge tool and just creating kind of a more softer look. And also I realized I've been saying smudge the entire time, but I think universally it's known as blend. <laughs> but I'm just gonna keep saying smudge because it's a cute word. Okay, so, and then I'm going in again with another multiply layer and just creating these darker shapes that are kind of close in proximity with the larger previously made um, fold shapes. <laughs> Uh, to create again more depth and then on another multiply layer we are going in with even larger and more sharper shapes uh, again to kind of create the illusion of more folds um, and then I think I made it a little bit more saturated as well and then I'm using the smudge tool again to make it look more soft and blended with the rest of the layers and then lastly we're going in with that last step where we're kind of adding in the darkest shade of these small little creases and dents that you can put in between the folds to kind of create kind of this more what's it called like sharp defined look and then i follow the same steps for the sleeves as well i'm using the lasso tool to kind of block off these large sharp shapes and then i'm going in later with or not later <laughs> right now with the smudge tool and then just smudging it And then I also went in to do some shirt shine. No, what's that called? Like shine highlights. That's the word highlights in his shirt uh, using a lighter color and just kind of motion blurring it and then smudging it even more. And then you can see here the steps are the same for the color where I go in with the multiply layer, the smudge tool, and yeah. One thing though, however, that I did want to mention is one way to make the shirt blend really well with the skin is I do a layer um, on the top of all the folds of the skin and then kind of take a color from the neck or from the face and kind of gouge and blur it out so you can see here if you kind of expand it it makes it look like it's kind of blending in <laughs> nicely with the clothing and then I kind of did the same thing with the hair because I forgot to in the hair rendering steps but for the hair because his hair is already white I use kind of a peachy color and then you can see it kind of creates this soft further blend. I'm saying blend and depth a lot in this video. So here is a before and after of the clothes. And that is basically how I render my hair, skin, and clothes for now. I'm saying for now because I like to experiment with a lot of different styles, but uh, that is basically it. 
you can see if you break it down it is just very simple steps of multiply layer sectioning off big chunks uh, smudging it and then kind of adjusting the opacity to how you like it and remember again there is no right or wrong way to render just go with how you feel looks good i mean i've only been doing digital art for about a year and a half so take this video like a grain of salt i often really don't know what i'm talking about but i hope this is helpful in some way and it just felt like kind of two friends talking because i i really need more friends but this is the finished piece i just added some chromatic aberration some color dodge if you'd like i can make another video on how i finalize my pieces but that is basically it for this rendering video i hope you guys enjoyed and i had a lot of fun <laughs> filming this so let me know what you would like to see next and i will see you next time